everybody, Skyler here, and I wanted to update you on the uh, CEO um, who died, that story where, you know, 180, 90 million uh, dollars worth of cryptocurrency just vanished and got lost. I just kind of wanted to give you an update to that, um, and I'll link to my last video if you haven't seen it, but uh, essentially just kind of a brief recap of the last video. Uh, the CEO, um, Gerald Cotton, he ended up dying, and um, he had all of the private keys to his exchange, Quadrica CX. He had all of the private keys stored on his laptop that he was the only one that had access to. And at, once he ended up dying, no one was able to get the money. And so uh, there are, um, in fact, I just saw a number. There are about 115,000 users that are still, still missing their funds and they're unable to get their funds. That is really scary. Um, I know a lot of people think that they're crypto is safe because hey it's coinbase hey it's binance hey it's you know kucoin it's it's a really well known exchange you know so so we're safe but you know i don't agree with this you know mountain gox claim because we don't know what happened with mountain gox mountain gox for those who don't know uh, about 70% of all the cryptocurrency that was being exchanged on the market got hacked and stolen and everybody lost their money in mountain gox and they're actually, interestingly enough, it, Mt. Gox just got bought for one Bitcoin by, um, oh my gosh, what's his name? Um, I, I'm slipping his name for some reason, but, you know, the, the crypto guy that used to be with EOS, um, the Mighty Ducks dude. Anyways, um, uh, anyways, that's what happened with Mt. Gox. And ho hopefully, you know, they say that they're they're going to restore, you know, funds and they're bringing the website back and they're going to help, you know, the people that lost their money with Mt. Gox. But that being said, what happened with um, Quadri Quadri Quadriga? <laughs> what happened with Quadriga CX is that the CEO ended up passing away and they just don't have access to the funds. Now, I guess I'm, I haven't actually read this article because um, maybe I should have. I'll, I'll link it. But I'm assuming why they're linking it, why they're saying Mt. Gox is because a lot of people think that the CEO faked his death. So um, essentially what took place is the CEO ended up dying, and the reason why a lot of people were skeptical is one, he was sick with Crohn's disease, two, he went by himself out of the country, to three, work on a, um, a non-profit, work on a, a charity of some sort, while four, being super financially tr uh, in trouble with his company. So, um, and then five, died in a, in a city that's well known for faking its death in an area that's known for producing fake death certificates and, and birth certificates. And, and so just because, and then he also had all of the keys only to him and he wouldn't share it with anybody. And it was on his personal laptop. At, and, and so when he died, the entire company couldn't get access to his funds because he was the one that was handling all of that. So all of that just throws up a bunch of red flags. Now, obviously, we don't want to, you know, it, it's unfortunate because you're getting, I feel like I'm to a point now where I'm, I'm, I have to say one of two things. I hope he died and didn't screw people over their money, which that's awful to say, or I hope he didn't die and he's alive and he just scammed people of their money, which that's awful too. So no matter what took place, it's just not a good situation. Uh, like I like it said in this article somewhere to go, uh, 115,000 people like that's awful. So whether it, they got lost because CEO died or they got lost because he was negligent, they're still lost. Now the nice thing about it being negligence is it's an encrypted computer, and um, from what I understand, the uh, computer has the keys on it, and so if they can bypass the encryption on the computer, then they can get the keys. Um, and so I don't know how you know secure that encryption is or how advanced it is or anything like that. But at any rate, um, I just wanted to... So I didn't know how he died and kind of the situation behind it. And, and this new article kind of, kind of talks about it. So I'm just going to kind of read it. So the private hospital in India where uh, Gerald Cotton, CEO of Canadian cryptocurrency exchange Quadrica CX, died on, November, on December 9th last year. 
More details have been released on his sudden death. A statement from uh, Fortis Escorts, which I thought was an escort agency. I was like, wait, was he doing some sh escort stuff and then he died? Or um, That's like a, it's an ambulance service or something. But anyways, uh, shared by Coindesk, details on how Cotton arrived at the hospital, how he died. According to the statement, the CEO was brought into the hospital in, in a critical condition related to his pre-existing Crohn's disease. During admission, uh, Cotton was diagnosed with septic shock and other poss and other possible possible oh, and other possibly life-threatening issues. The statement then explains how Cotton died. Um, and then it goes on saying on December 9th, a uh, patient suffered from a cardiac arrest was received was revived, sorry, by CPR. Uh, the patient heart condition continued to deteriorate, and the patient suffered a second cardiac arrest at 6.30 p.m., and then, despite their best efforts, he was declared dead at, at 7.26 p.m. Um, all standard medical procedures were followed, yada, 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 yada. So, um, and then here's his death certificate right here, um, signed by, and you see the... the um, the person that signed their death right there. So, so I mean, they do have a death certificate, although we knew that before, but I just didn't know how he died. Now, I was really curious to how the news was relayed, um, but uh, to the money aspect of this issue, this is what was in their wallet. So they had 26,500 Bitcoin, 11,000 Bitcoin Cash, 11,000 Bitcoin Cash SV, um, 3,500 Bitcoin Gold, 200,000 Litecoin, 430,000 Ether, and all of it equaled out to be about 147 million. Um, I don't know if it's at the time of this article or what, but at any rate, a pretty sad and messed up story, whatever happened. I am going to continue following this um, just to see. It seems like a funeral would have taken place, and there would have been some sort of like, we should know whether or not he's dead or not, right? If he died at a hospital, he should have been. And, and maybe they have figured that out, and I just haven't seen the articles that po pulled, you know, that have come out. But I, I don't think, I, I just, uh, before I even did the video, I just brief, I went through it, all the news, um, all my news links, just to see if there's anything. And I can't find anything. So I will be updating you once I do find that out that information. Oh, yeah, and then let me just show you this article. So uh, it's just a sad story about a guy um, who lost all of his money in that exchange. He went to Canada and put, all of his money and all he was using it for it was was uh, as remittance I believe um, all he was using it for was he was just going from the United States to Canada and wanted to transfer money over there and wanted it wanted it to be really cheap and so that's all he was using it for and as he was doing that he was unable to get his money and essentially now he's stuck you know he had to get an apartment he's just he has a job now and he's just paying month to month he went there to like live on his whole on his savings and kind of retire but now he can't so um we're still trying to figure out the wallets um in fact, let's see, let's read this right here. Users have accused Quadrica of faking Cotton's death to steal from their cold wallet reserves. Blockchain forensic experts also found that the exchange didn't have any cold wallets in place based on deposit withdrawal data they've accumulated from cl from clients. So there are people even denying there was even cold wallets and they don't know where that money actually is or... Um, Let's see, I'm seeing no indication of Quadrica ever having cold reserve wallets looking at their three main addresses. Whoops. Yeah, Bitfinex, Poloniex. Yeah, I'll leave links to all this so you can read read all of this. Um, looks like, uh, oh yeah, nothing new. At any rate, pretty interesting stuff. I'm going to keep following this story and kind of see where it goes and hopefully, you know, find some resolution to it. And hopefully, you know, he faked his death and they find him and then they get their money back and he goes to, you know, that's, dude, I feel so wrong for even saying that because what if he died? That's such a messed up statement to, to say. But at any rate, um, I'm going to follow this. If you want to, you know, continue knowing what's going on, if you want updates from me or whatever, 
you know, hit the bell notification. I'll, I'll, uh, I post videos every single day, and um, yeah, and then I'm supposed to ask for you know likes and subscribes or something like that. <laughs> Jeez, YouTube is so new to me, and people make fun of me and how I present this all the time. It's not the way that YouTube does it, man. All right, I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> At any rate, appreciate everyone who has watched and all that, and uh, yeah, see you tomorrow. Thanks. Take care. Bye.